It's certainly safe to say that our planet is in dire need of an alternative energy source from fossil fuels to combat the changing climate. We need something powerful, cost-efficient, and something that doesn't release CO2 into the atmosphere. I'm talking, of course, of Minecraft Redstone. Yes, I want to step away for a second from suggesting a legitimate solution to global warming and consider the hypothetical feasibility of redstone if it were to exist on our planet. Also, I want to compare a redstone voltage to that of a AA battery to see how powerful redstone really is, and of course how much we need to meet Earth's energy demands. Now there's plenty for us to consider from material science to economics, but let's do this through physics and figure out the voltage. So redstone operates as both a source and a transmitter of energy. In order to calculate the voltage, we need the resistance within the redstone wire. Additionally, to calculate voltage, we need either the current flow rate in amps or the power output in watts. There's no way to figure out the current flow yet directly, so we're going to be going for the power output value first. From there, we can calculate the voltage according to this relationship. Voltage is the square root of power times resistance. So let's start with getting this resistance value. The resistance of a wire is given by the following equation. Resistivity times length over area. Let's look at the length and area first. If you take a look at redstone in your inventory, you'll notice that it has the exact same granularity as sugar, of which we possess the data of here on Earth. The average radius of a grain of sugar is about 250 microns, or 0.25 millimeters. So we can get the area of our wire by plugging that into pi r squared. This produces an area of 1.963 times 10 to the negative 7 meters squared. Now for the length. We want to find the total resistance over the maximum possible voltage, so we're going to be using the total length that a redstone signal can travel, which is 15 blocks equaling 15 meters. The last thing we need for resistance is the resistivity coefficient. Now here we have to consider a material that is close in color and luster, that is the uh, shine of material. The closest one I could find was something called cinnabar, a mercury sulfide material with a resistivity coefficient of 2 times 10 to the 7th. So to reiterate, we have a 100% voltage drop over a 15 meter long wire with electrons passing in an area of 1.96 times 10 to the negative 7 meters squared, in material with a resistivity of 2 times 10 to the 7th power. Yeah, this definitely seems like new territory when it comes to electrical engineering. Anyway, we can plug these values into this formula and produce a resistance of 1.53 times 10 to the 15 ohms. Now, like any other form of energy, this electrical energy that the redstone is generating can convert into energy in the form of a lamp or a dispenser, or in the case where it expends the maximum energy, mechanical energy, when it pushes a piston upward. And to tag onto this, we'll put the heaviest object in the game on top of the piston, a gold block. We need to refrain from breaking fundamental conservation of energy laws and declare that pushing a piston with more than one block or adding an additional piston on top not be possible. Anyway, now we're seeing what the minimum power output of the redstone battery is, using the most power demanding task that exists in the game while obeying the basic laws of the universe. And what I mean by minimum power output is that, hypothetically, if there were a heavier material in the game that the piston could push, that means that the voltage of the redstone would be higher. In fact, it's said that blue ice is actually the heaviest object, according to this post on Reddit but I'll keep it simple and use gold for this example. Another idea I was considering was that blocks like gold and diamond are weightless because they can float, whereas blocks like uh, anvils and gravel actually have a weight to consider. I definitely want to hear your thoughts and interpretations of the Minecraft universe in the comments, but for this example I'm just going to use gold because there's more information for its weight out there. And we are only exploring this idea in concept. Now we need the power output in watts. This is found by taking the force applied downward by the gold block times the distance it travels divided by the time it takes for it to do it. The gold block weighs about 19.2 thousand kilograms. We can multiply this by the acceleration on our Minecraft world, 
which we calculated as 20 meters per second squared if you remember from my aero velocity video. Be sure to watch that too if you haven't already. So the force would equate to about 384,000 newtons. Next we need the distance that this block is pushed up. It's only one block, so that's equal to one meter. The last thing we need to find is the time it takes for it to do the action. This action is fortunately completely consistent, so timing it once produces an accurate result of 0.1 seconds. We can finally calculate the power output when we plug in these values. Quite simply, with all the 1 values, the answer is just the force times 10. We'll round it to 3.84 million watts. For reference, the average American household uses 1 million watts a month, meaning a single dust of redstone can theoretically last you about 3 months. But still, we don't really care about the power output. We want to think of redstone in the context of a power generator, and of course, with that there is the resistance in the wire that we need to consider. We want the voltage before it passes through the wire. This is what we can use to power the world. What I mean is that redstone is a bad conductor to use as a wire. So once we find the voltage, we can combine that with a better wire, like a gold for example, and generate a far greater amount of power. So on to it. As I mentioned, voltage is equal to the square root of resistance times power. And for a single patch of redstone dust, it's 7.66 times 10 to the 10 volts, or about 77 billion volts. Now with the voltage, you can actually quite easily calculate the amperage or current flow rate with this formula. I'll leave that for you to find out. So now that we have the voltage, it does seem like redstone is pretty powerful. I mean, one AA battery is 1.5 volts, so redstone is equal to 51 billion AA batteries. But back to the central question, can Earth really run on redstone? How much redstone do we need for this planet? Well, now we need to introduce another important unit, the kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour is a unit of just pure energy, like a joule, while a watt is a joule per second. When you see your electric bill, you see the amount of energy used, not the rate at which you used it. So this is the value we want. To get this, we just need to see the work done by the piston in our power calculation, which we got as 384,000 joules equating to a whopping 0 0.1076 kilowatt hours. The reason it's so much lower than what you might expect based on the voltage is because we're not considering how the redstone signal is maintained forever. It's not like the voltage of redstone goes down over time. But again, conservation of energy. So let's take our data with a grain of redstone and just use the instantaneous energy output. So how much redstone do we need for the world? Well. Total energy consumption in 2017 was 23.7 thousand terawatts hours. We can divide this by our kilowatt hour per redstone, meaning we'll need 2.2 times 10 to the 14th redstone dusts. Yeah, that might seem like a lot for Earth, but actually the US alone uses over triple that yearly in grams of coal. And if we look at the rarity, there's about 8 veins in a single chunk so it's safe to say that redstone can probably get the job done. Now a lot of my data was assessed interpretively, so I definitely want to hear your thoughts and personal ideas about the calculations in the comments. Also, please do like and subscribe so you're there for the next video.